Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Yeah, and I wasn't going to do a YouTube channel because I was all like, oh, I can't do it. It's, uh, oh, no, too good. no one wants to look at me. And then he, we, I'd be talking in his like Discord and stuff. He'd be like, Stop coming in here and yelling at us. Put, just record it. <laughs> yeah. Just record it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. But anyone who knows you knows that you can. Uh, that you're entertaining. I would say that. So, I think more informative is the yeah. key. And and Othias being a YouTube impresario, mm. you know, he immediately <laughs> recognizes. You know, you know, it's the pimp game. You know, game recognizes <laughs> game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I've been pimping Matt as hard as I can. I'm gonna be well, I mean, yeah, I, you know. I do appreciate it. Yeah, you gotta but, do it. Uh, no, it's just the the no. problem is honestly, the Matt and I had a similar approach to um, mm. understanding things. So, C and Arsenal is known for being an in-depth history series that doesn't muck around with uh, fud lore. Uh, it doesn't muck around with uh, falsehoods that have worked their way into the historical narrative because they're popular or cool sounding you know a lot of the stuff that gets repeated that's false about gun history is repeated because it's evocative because it it makes a contact with a point of emotion and i think some of the problems that we're having in the gun industry as a whole is that we are far more emotive and we're being dragged into being more emotive than we are being logical about a lot of things and so while matt is very passionate about his topics he's also very reasoned about them and so i was very happy to hear his voice out there and I've been sort of talking to him about how to maybe represent that to other people. Yeah. Well, and one thing he's he's said to me, which is, I don't know, it really struck with me, kind of his project and my project, we have the same underlying value where accuracy is so important. Um, so, like, you know, you can there are other shows that cover old firearms, but none that are as thoroughly researched as Matthias is because he... Like, he will work his butt off to make something that is unassailable, right? This is, at the present day, the sum of the facts. And then I was thinking, you know, we've been doing this gun rights thing for about a, a century. Uh, you know, a little over a century is when we had the first modern gun control laws. And no one's ever done that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I want to do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, Matt, Matt and I were even having a conversation the other day, but if you want to go look at someone's voting history on firearms-related issues, mm -hmm. where do you go? You know, you can get an NRA rating. You know, maybe FPC or GOA even have some of their own sort of ratings or records, but they're scattered. They're not uniform, and they're not necessarily objective. Even if I support them or don't support them, it doesn't matter. They're not necessarily just an objective archive of this person has voted this way on these gun control issues throughout their entire career. Um, and that's it. That's all you need is a direct summary. Instead, everything is played on sort of the now and on feelings. And we're constantly surprised by the way uh, things turn out or politicians behave. And a lot of it is the only reason you're surprised is because you haven't paid attention to what they did the last nine times because you forgot. Right. And, you know, trying to create an archive and to create a baseline understanding of what is what not only what is happening but what has happened and exactly how it happened it's sadly lacking like we actually rely on a it's interesting but when we talk about gun history in terms of law we rely much more on an oral gun history than we do on a written one because there's very little that's written without just a clear bias. And even even pro-gun or anti-gun, it doesn't matter. Right. The biases are so strong that everything is a justification to an opinion and not just a statement of fact. Mm -hmm. Right, So, and, and here's a great example. We all talk about the NFA all the time, right? Mm -hmm. um, or, or those of us who are more in the, you know, the now of, of gun rights stuff. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a comprehensive history of that law what the debates were, what, like, why were suppressors included? Why short barrels? You know, why that length? Have you ever seen that? Uh, I can say that I haven't. Uh, I don't know. Well, Thias, no, because... have you? <laughs> no. Um, 
Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but it means that it's not getting any attention if it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so when I start talking to somebody that takes the matter as seriously as I do, I would like them to have more attention. Um, I would very much like to see a unified effort between organizations to have even just a simple... I mean, how powerful would it be right now if we could go put together, I mean, a third-tier SQL database that kept track of every gun law that ever tried to be passed, you know what I mean? And in each law, we had a record of who voted and which way they voted. And you could look up your congressman or you could look up the gun law and from either side see what happened. That sounds like something that should already exist, especially as much as we talk about it. Yeah, it It, should. I mean, it, 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 It doesn't, because to do that, you have to have... You know, web developer. You have to have a DBA. You have to have someone that is, you have to have many volunteers constantly inputting whatever comes up in their state. If you want to get to the state level, like you have to organize all of that. And when you go to organize that and you start fundraising, one of the things you notice is that fundraising becomes its own thing. Um, I, I actually worked on the software side of fundraising years and years and years ago, and I will tell you, it becomes its own animal, like sales. And it can quickly take over an organization, and we saw it happen with the NRA. And I will not doubt it if we see it happen with some of the organizations that are trying to replace the NRA, because it's like becoming obsessed with your own heartbeat. You need that fundraising, that's fine. But what you don't want to do is lose sight of policy, lose sight of history, and lose sight of your mutual objectives and how to achieve them efficiently. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, let me just do a couple of things here. First of all, let me encourage everyone watching us to smash the thumbs up. So I really appreciate that. We have Othias of CN Arsenal, as well as uh, Matthew LaRossier of Fudbusters here joining us. And this this is, I think this is a really interesting conversation. But, you know, since I've got the smart dudes here, um, I, I think the question that you're raising here um is probably answered in a couple of different ways, right? There's probably a couple of different reasons. One of them, I would say, is that in America, nowadays, it is a bad thing to be nerdy. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a bad thing, right? So, like, first well, of all, you're talking not. about information, like raw information. You're asking for facts. That's actually horrible these days to, to a right. lot of people. Right. Um, people rather represent some of the data and not all of the data. Right. And, but... and, and mostly the emotional, the emotional part of it that triggers every... Look, it's, it's like YouTube that we're all doing, right? Most people out there connect to the straight-up drama and the thing that gets them fired up, you know, uh, to the hot spicy food. I look at what we all do on YouTube as kind of like a restaurant. And some people are serving fast food. Some people have nice sit-down dinners. And, and there's all, you know, you know you could have five, six-course meals or something and everything in between that. Um, but most of what's popular is fast food these days, right? right? It's mostly for the taste. It doesn't really give you any kind of nutritional value. It goes in the rooter, comes right out the tutor. <laughs> you know, that kind the of thing. The checkers is good. Yeah, why you why you gotta be mean to checkers? Yeah, checkers is good for your heart though. What about they that? built they built a brand new checkers? It's the first time I've ever seen a new checkers in like I don't know when. Uh, uh, yeah, but you well, but you no, see, but I, you, I get what you're you saying. What I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to throw me off. But you see what I'm saying? I think the first part of it is the first reason for all of this, why there is no comprehensive database that you could go to and 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 find all this info. Um, just straight up like that is because it doesn't feed into that, right? Of what everyone's doing. Well, more than, more than that, it's 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 hard work. It's not sexy work, you know. Mm-hmm. And then on the back end of it, how do you monetize it? Because that's the first thing everybody's thinking in these things. Like mm-hmm. every organization that you see rise to preeminence, the reason they rise to preeminence is because of two factors: they can raise money and they can spend it on advertising. And so true grassroots effort is very hard to organize uh, without having to have sort of a almost a narcissistic or, or self-aggrandizing element. Uh, Matt and I have had this conversation multiple times where you're like, mm-hmm. how do you have a czar of gun rights? You know what I mean? How do you have this preeminent character that is supposed to represent gun rights in America as a rallying point and not have that person end up being a total insane piece of crap 
because yeah. a, a normal human being would cave under that pressure. It, it takes a very specific sort of self uh, importance to do that. And then those become unreliable people. And then we see the wave happen over and over and over again. Now, what happened, what has happened previously is true grassroots has worked. So true grassroots requires a little sweat from everybody, a lot of attention from everybody and some loose organization. It's worked at times. But the problem with it now is, and I think this is where we get concerned with social media and things like that, is that you see an attempt to disrupt grassroots efforts, mm -hmm. to disrupt grassroots involvement. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's that's sort of the underlying current of what people are talking about when they talk about media censorship. Their fear is that they're losing their ability to simply communicate their feelings mm -hmm. on this matter. Yeah. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.